um, uh, Dr. Sudip Chong is presenting, and with us, uh, teacher would be Dr. Sanjay Mohan Bhattacharya, who is now uh, Dean of Student, who is a Dean of Student Affairs at RKM Shapurish and Bivinisha Medical Sciences. So, Sudip, you can share your screen, present, and then we will start discussing. Hello. 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 Uh, good morning, everyone. I'm Dr. Shudipto, going to present benign squatal swelling and eversion of sac. Uh, my patient, a uh, 40 years, uh, years old gentleman, serviceman by occupation, uh, resident of Powda, presented with complaints of swelling in the right squatum since last two years. Uh, he was apparently well two years back when he noticed a painless swelling in the right side of his uh, squatum, which was about 5 cross 3 cm in size and which have increased with time to attend the present condition. The swelling do not increase in size with strenuous activity and do not reduce uh, back on lying down. There is no history of fever, there is no history of pain, no history of any trauma, no history of any painful micturation. He do not give any history of weight loss, anorexia, chest pain, shortness of breath, hemoptysis, and there was no similar swelling elsewhere in his body. On past history, he is a known diabetic since last 10 years and under medication, and he had uh, laparoscopic cholecystectomy five years back. Uh, there is no known uh, history of any allergy to any food or medication. On personal history, he is a known smoker and smokes about 10 cigarettes per day since last 15 years, an occasional drinker and drinks 60 ml of alcohol on weekends since last 10 years. Other than that, his bowel, bladder, sleep appetites are within normal limits. On family history, there is no significant family history. On general survey, I examined my patient by taking his consent and keeping his privacy maintained. My patient was uh, is alert conscious and cooperative having an average build and BMI of 23 kg per meter square, having a decubitus of choice. His blood pressure is 130 by 80 millimeters of mercury, measured in right upper arm in supine posture, uh, having a pulse rate of 88 beats per minute, which is a regular normal volume without any radio radial or radio femoral delay. And all the peripheral pulses can be fed. The respiratory rate is 16 cycles per minute. Uh, if you do not have any pallor, icterus, cyanosis or clubbing, neck veins are not engorged, neck glands are not palpable, he is afebrile. On local examination, I examined my patient by taking his consent and by exposing uh, the patient below the umbilicus in standing position. On inspection, a 8 cm cross 5 cm uh, pyriform shaped swelling was seen in the right hemisquartum which was extending from the root of the right, uh, right, squat, right hemisquartum till the, bare, till the base of the uh, right squatum. Uh, the swelling is pyriform in shape, smooth in surface and regular in margin. There is no scar mark, venous prominence over the skin. There, there is loss of rugosities over the right hemisquartum. There is no calf impulse and the penis is, is in normal position. On palpation, I corroborated my inspectory findings. Uh, the swelling was non-tender. The temperature of the swelling was normal. The, uh, on palpation, a 8 cross 5 centimeter pyriform shaped swelling was noted in the right hemisquartum. Uh, the swelling is smooth in surface, regular in margin, firm in consistency. We can get above the swelling. We can uh, palpate the cause for structures. And the uh, right uh, and uh, right testes can be filled separately. The swelling extends from the root of the right uh, squatum to the base of the squatum. 
transimulation test was found to be positive fluctuation test was positive there was no lymphatic nephrosis on digital rectal examination the splinter tone was normal uh, normal prostate was found and no rectal growth on general system examination uh, the cardiovascular system uh, respiratory system abdomen and central nervous system was found to be within normal limits a summary a 45 years old gentleman presented with a uh, painless swelling in the right hemispheroidum uh, for uh, since last two years initially it was smaller in size but with time it has increased in size to attain the current size the swelling has increased in size uh, thus there is no his uh, the swelling do not increase in size with strenuous activity or decrease in size while lying down there is no other swelling elsewhere in the body uh, there is no other complaints on general sur general survey is uh, general survey is uh, within normal limits on examination 8 cross 5 cm piriform piriform shaped swelling was noted in the right hemispheroidum extending from the uh, root of the right uh, right sphrotum or till the base of the right sphrotum the swelling is uh, smooth in surface regular in margin well defined in margin the skin over the swelling appears to be normal without any scar venous prominence there is loss of rugosity the swelling is firm in consistency we can get above the swelling and uh, can palpate the cord structures the right testes can be palpated separately transimulation test was uh, positive there was no cough in my provisional diagnosis is it's a case of primary vaginal hydrocele in a 45 year diabetic male okay dr shudeep to what yes, do you mean by the primary vaginal hydrocele ah uh, so primary uh, the primary vaginal hydrocele means uh, the hydrocele uh, vaginal hydrocele without any uh, known etiological cause so what is the secondary hydrocele if i say it is the secondary hydrocele what what the common pathology hydrocele. can cause hydrocele secondary hydrocele common pathologies in which in which pathological condition you can find there is secondary hydrocele in the scrotal sac Ah, uh, sir, secondary hydrocele or the hydrocele with uh, having a uh, any uh, known etiological cause? Uh, what? Like what? Uh, what etiological cause? Okay, commonest, commonest etiological cause. What pathology may be there in the scrotum which can lead to secondary hydrocele? Simple, these are all common. Epidemic or kind of secondary hydrocele, testicular okay. tumor, testicular tumor. Something about But the clinical you... part, Dr. Bharti. Clinical part. Yeah. Go back to your slide. Yeah. Uh, when you describe the swelling in the scrotum, you said it was small in size, attain the current size. It will be better to say that a uh, patient gesture shows swelling was like this. So estimate swelling about three or four centimeter, and then gradually increase in size to attain the present size of about this. So small size attain current size uh, has no uh, correlation. Try to mention about what size patient noticed it at the beginning, and then how he has gone about that. Okay. And uh, if you go to the examination part, examination. Show the examination slide. Local examination. Ah, uh, sir, it ah, uh, sir, it is visible on the screen. No, not yet. No, 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 no. What what was your palpatory finding in this patient? How do you start? Patient has got swelling in the scrotum, and you started saying is a piriform shaped swelling. What is a classical piriform shaped swelling? What do you find in a piriform shaped swelling? Piriform means what? Answer the pear shaped. Uh... Not exactly. 
pyriform is you have two swelling and there is the indentation in between that classically what? found in a inguinal hernia coming from the groin constituting the superficial ring and then down to the bottom of the scrotum but if you have a scrotal swelling how can it be pyriform it is coming from the bottom of the scrotum up to the root so mm. uh, what do you mean by you are saying that is a pyriform shaped swelling okay try to understand second mm. point you said the swelling is a uh, firm in field if the swelling is firm in field do you try to elicit fluctuation transformation such a swelling why a vaginal hydrostatic should be firm in field patient is not with us but if the patient is in front of you and you, you are finding very with the examiner it will be a uh, wrong clinical examination what do you expect you expect a vaginal hydrostatic to be firm in field Sometimes it can be ten uh, cystic. It will cystic in. Uh... You can say if it is a very large hydrocele, it can be ten cystic. But usually these are not uh, uh, farm swelling. <laughs> and then you said the testis is uh, palpable separately from the swelling. Uh, that cannot cannot be palpable. Uh, yeah, so every that's time you are saying that's why yeah, every time you are saying that testis is palpable, I was wondering. If you get a diagnosis of primary vaginal hydrocele, it is unlikely mm -hmm. that test will be palpable. Yes, sir. Only in a case of the secondary hydrocele, that's why I asked that question. Only yeah. in a case of the secondary hydrocele, you might get the test is palpable. As because the most of the cases of the secondary hydrocele is hydrocele is lax hydrocele. That is what your sir he was asking. It is 10 cystic. In a case of primary hydrocele, it should be 10 cystic. Do you understand why I asked that question? That's yes, why sir. I asked this question. Okay. <clears throat> you said the transformation is positive. Yes, sir. Get above the swelling is positive. Yes, sir. In a hydrocele, can it be a negative? Uh, yes, sir. In case of congenital hydrocele, we can uh, we uh, we cannot get above the swelling. Congenital is one. What else? Congenital and uh, hydrocele can start from the scrotum and go up the deep ring. No communication. What is that called as? Hydrocele coming from the bottom scrotum, going up to the mm -hmm. deep ring. Close there. What is that called as? Hmm? You know the different types of hydrocele. Ah, uh, yes, sir. Um... So what, why, why, why different types of hydrocele comes up? What is the explanation? Congenital explanation. Uh, what do you mean by congenital hydrocele? What uh, is congenital hydrocele? Uh, so in congenital hydrocele, there is patent process of the genalis. The so uh, whole process is persisting. Persisting. Okay. Yes, sir. yes, sir. How do you explain a primary hydrocele tunica vaginalis? Uh, sir, can you repeat the question? Primary. Pri you said hydrocele of the tunica vaginalis. Hmm. What is the explanation? What happened to process vaginalis here? Uh, sir, what in uh, case of primary hydrocele, sir, uh, there is accumulation of fluid in that uh, tunica vaginalis uh, due to excessive secretion huh. of fluid or so, maybe uh, decrease so in the process of vaginalis from the deep ring up to the upper pole of tissue is obliterated. Hmm. Then what yes, happens in incisional hydrocele of the pod? Uh, sir, in, uh, of the pod? Uh, sir, in incisional hydrocele of the pod, uh, there will be uh, uh, intermittent. Uh, 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 there will be intermittent uh, uh, collection of swelling uh, in the process of uh, process of analysis. In the intervening part, yes, sir. In the intervening part of the process of analysis, there will be accumulation of fluid. What is uh, a funicular type of hydrocele? Funicular. Uh, so in funicular kind of hydrocele, the 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 process it uh, the process of analysis will be. Uh, patent uh, 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 in the deep ring uh, till up to the upper pole of the uh, testis. Hmm.
hematosyl or kylosyl yeah you stick to some hydrosyl diagonal it can be secondary hydrosyl but secondary hydrosyl has got some differentiation in that case testis may not be it may be palpable so keep your findings and then based on the finding you give a different diagnosis do you like to put a diagnosis of uh, varicose vein varicose Oh, sir, uh, pericocils are also not transmissible and uh, illumination will be yes. negative. So, should not should not bring unnecessary things. Once you have if, once you have clinical points in favor of your diagnosis, you try to correlate with this only. Okay. Do you think it can be a testicular tumor? No, sir. Likely. Why not? Uh, so, because uh, uh, the uh, the swelling is a uh, cystic in the. Uh, Uh, cystic and the fluctuation uh, is positive. So it is also uh, swelling is there for two years. Swelling is there for two years. Slowly yes. increasing in size. Okay, on examination uh -huh. is a dense cystic swelling. Okay, fluctuation is positive and then transmission is positive. Unlikely to be testicular tumor. Okay. Can you think of it is an epididymal cyst? Yes, sir. It could be epididymal cyst. Uh -huh. Because, then why uh, don't you discuss about the epididymal cyst in first diagnosis? Okay, vaginal hydrocele sense epididymal cyst. Yes. So sir. it can be. Yes, sir. But but in that case, what will be there? Ah, uh, so the uh, so this, in case of epididymal cyst, it will be above and. About the... Yes, as because you said that testis is palpable, so mm. it will be behind or it is separate. You can separate the testis from the epididymis, or there will be group. Yes, sir. Okay. 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 <clears throat> so ultimately, what's your final diagnosis? Ah, uh, sir, my uh, final diagnosis is a case of. Primary uh, vaginal hydrocele in a case of forty-five uh, years old uh, diabetic male. So, uh, whenever you are discussing, you give your diagnosis vaginal hydrocele. Okay, the if you start primary vaginal hydrocele, then your examiner will ask you question: What is the primary hydrocele? What is the secondary hydrocele? Then, in your case, what is your diagnosis? Then you can say that it is the primary hydrocele. Do you understand why we are discussing in that way? That yes. will be easy and that way good. So you will get some question. Okay, you can confirm your diagnosis by discussing in that way. So, so what's your next plan in this case? How will you manage? How will you proceed in this case? Now, sir, I will like to do some uh, investigations. Uh, uh, to confirm my diagnosis, I will. Uh, What investigation? Like... <clears throat> Uh, sir, I will. Uh, uh, sir, I will like to uh, uh, do an uh, ultrasound. As because you uh, have discussed in that way, the hydrocele, which is primary, you are discussing as a primary, but testis is you are palpating. It is palpable. So in that case, you should keep in your mind whether it is in secondary hydrocele or it associates with a testicular malignancy. Do you understand? So that's yes, why what investigation you want to do clinical extension as in clinical extension. Ah, uh, sir, I would like to uh, do an uh, uh, ultrasound of the lower abdomen. Oh, the, uh, and lower abdomen for this patient. Why? Well, uh, sir, to see any uh, any uh, retroperitoneal lymph nodes or any. Why abdominal? retroperitoneal? First, yeah, total total I don't think. And you want to retrograde your limb node? No. Confine to your clinical diagnosis. If you are very certain that it's a vaginal hydrocele, uh, it's a clinical diagnosis. But if you have a, some suspicion of a secondary hydrocele, yes, an ultrasound is a just an extension clinical exam you can do. Why do you jump to abdomen? Patient who has got an idiopathic hydrocele, how do you expect patient to retrograde your limb node? Don't confuse. You keep your mind towards a now you are going to diagnose a vaginal hydrocele. So think of managing a vaginal hydrocele. Why do you think of uh, some diagnosis which is not there in the clinical diagnosis? 
now then ultrasound shows like yes the test is enlarged the small hydrocel yes th then the question comes for the investigation but if the ultrasound corroborates your clinical diagnosis there is a good amount of fluid around the testicular uh, part the test is normal in size so there is no reason to go for a lower abdominal sonography to exclude a lymph node do you do in all hydrocele patients no sir do you ask for lower abdominal sonography in a patient who has got vaginal hydrocele don't do Yes, sir. Okay. Whenever the we are having the suspicion and age is, you said the more above the fifty. Okay, so that's why so you are thinking the age is above the fifty. This is number one. Number two, you are palpating the testes. So it happened yes, to some some cases. You have opened, thinking it without doing ultrasound. You have opened up. And you have seen it is a suspicious swelling in the testes, so that's why. And you have given an incision on the scrotum, so that's why in an elderly bar or like this patient, whenever you will feel the testes or the testes is palpable in a case of hydrocele, so then we should do minimum at least the clinical extension the USG of the scrotum. Okay, otherwise. If we see the tense hydrocele, and it is for a prolonged period, most of the cases of the hydrocele is more than 10 years, 15 years. So in that case only, if the patient is poor, and if you don't have any other investigation to do except the, for operation, if you are planning, you are planning to do the operative fitness. Huh? The investigation for operative fitness. Otherwise, you are not supposed to do. Just an extension. I... Suppose, Shudipto, you yes, have a patient in front of you who got a hernia. Clinically, yes, you see why it's a hernia. Do you yes, need sir. to do the ultrasound to confirm the diagnosis of hernia? No, sir. Yeah, because No, sir. We, we do, not, no. do not need an no. ultrasound to confirm a diagnosis. Yes. Yes. If you have a clear diagnosis of hernia, swelling, in reducible swelling, the ultrasound is not required to confirm the diagnosis of hernia. You do ultrasound for some other reason. To exclude yes. a prostatic enlargement or any chronic urinary obstruction. So keep in mind that even for a hydrocele, as Dr. Varcha said, the swelling is there for five years, slowly mm -hmm. increasing in size, ten cystic swelling, fluctuation positive, transfer positive. You can skip doing a ultrasound of the cortical sac. Nothing will be gained. But yes, if you have a suspicion, it might be secondary hydrocele. Yes, I agree that you must do a ultrasound to exclude underlying testicular swelling. Okay. Fine. So you have done ultrasound. Diagnosis is confirmed. Then, it's a primary. Then what do you want to do? Uh, sir, I would like to do some preoperative uh, routine investigations like hemoglobin, TCD, CSR, uh, blood for coagulation profile, uh, ECG, and uh, why, 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 testing. why need a coagulation profile for a patient who has reversion of sac? Is it a routine uh, uh, test for all patients attending OPD coagulation profile, which includes PT? INR, PTTK, is it a routine test? Oh, sir, I would like to. Uh, it's not routinely done. I would like to do for uh, P time INR. Yeah, P time INR for a patient with inversion of sac. Try to understand. Don't say something which is not a, a, a routine practice. Tell me which patient require a coagulation study. How do you proceed? You don't do coagulation study for all patients. What are the indications for doing coagulation profile in a surgical patient? History is very important. You have Suppose taken the you have done platelet count. Platelet count is normal. But some and, you have and done... And in, in, in the history, in the history, you have asked the patient whether he has got any easy bruisability, whether he has got excessive bleeding after a minor trauma, whether he has got any family history of bleeding diathesis, so, if the history is suggestive of some coagulation disorder, and then on examination, find patients come petechial spots, patients come ecchymosis. So, these are the situations. Otherwise, doing a, doing a, even for a hernia, we don't do, we do a PTA, uh, INR, PTTK for, all, for even a hernia patient, for a thyroid patient. No. So, study for coagulation profile, there are some specific, because it's a very costly investigation. It costs you 2,000 rupees to get a problem profile done. 
So this will be done in situations where you have a pointer that patient has got some bleeding diathesis. Otherwise, this is not routine. Makonda, in routine yes. cases, if we do a platelet count, if it is normal, but CT is more, it is to some extent suspicious. Are you going to do the PTI in that? No, agree. You see, platelet count may not be altered in hemophilia. Okay, so the most important is history pointing to a bleeding diathesis. Yeah, yeah. Patient has got some coagulation abnormalities. Patient has got a family history of bleeding diathesis. Yes, the other patient also suspicious. And these are the patients who can always say that he has got easy bruisability. There are some minor trauma which is leading to a lot of bleeding. So, don't complicate. In a hydrocele patient, no examiner expect that uh, that you are you are going to um, uh, do a... PTINR uh, is problem. not indicated. PTINR okay. is not indicated. Go, once you say it will be in problem, then you have to justify who are going to do this. It's not required for a, a routine... Do you do in your practice, in your hospital, do you ask the patient to get a uh, PTIN or PTTK to be done for a reversion of sac? No, no, sir. no. Then, then why do you say in the exam also? Uh, that is also another recommendation. But are you doing BTCT? Yes, sir, we, we would do a bleeding time and clotting time. Okay, okay. Then, uh, so, what is the treatment? Uh, sir, as uh, sir, I would like to go for an uh, surgical approach in this patient, and uh, I will like to uh, 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 before that I will uh, go for the pre-anesthetic checkup and uh, followed by uh, you send the patient to anesthesia department for a pre-anesthetic checkup. What is the usual practice? You will send the patient to anesthetic all the reports to get a uh, GA fitness. Mm -hmm. You will send the patient to anesthesia department for a GA fitness. No, but we will do. Uh, uh, we can do it uh, on spinal anesthesia or can for doing spinal local. Anesthesia. For a can you do in the local anesthesia? Yeah, anesthesia will get mad. If you start sending, we we are operating all these patients in the OPD uh, OT. We don't do this in a routine uh, uh, theater under spinal. What is the uh, uh, common anesthesia you give for hydrocele operation? Do not complicate. Keep simple things simple. Most of the hydrocel is operated under local anesthesia. Okay? Most of the hydrocel is done under local anesthesia. So why do you send the patient anesthesia? Unless it's a very large hydrocel, bilateral hydrocel. Yes. In that case, there is the indication. This in lateral hydrocel of these dimensions. Or you have because... seen the big hydrocel thick Transfilmination negative, if patient requires a excision of the sac, in that case you might. Otherwise, local anesthesia is more than yes. enough. Keep, keep simple things simple. Don't complicate. Most of the hydrocele is operating local anesthesia. So you have to do the investigation. You exclude diabetes. You see the hemoglobin level. Uh, see the uh, routine urea creatinine. So these are the basic things one should do. So what operation are you going to do in this patient? Uh, so, I will have to do a uh, eversion of sac of the eversion of right sac is a standard operation. Okay. What what other surgery is possible in a patient who has got uh, hydrocele? Other, uh, surgery other, other surgeries, uh, we can do a uh, lot of plication. Lord's plication. What else? And uh, What is hydroselectomy? Lords is what? You no. open the sac and apply the sac behind the tissue. That is lords. Eversion is you made incision, Evert the turn the sac around, bring the tissues out and switch it behind. That is standard eversion of sac. What is hydroselectomy? What is hydroselectomy? Oh, sir, aspiration of the Aspiration is not hydrocelectomy. Aspiration. Hydrocelectomy is when there is a large hydrocele, long standing hydrocele, thick walled sac. In that case, you can decide to excise the clinical sac. 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 And once you excise, what you have to do? If you excise the sac, how do you manage the uh, hydrocele sac? It is vascular, it will bleed. 
Uh, sir, we uh, can uh, diathermy and cauterize the bleeding surface, or we can uh, uh, we can do uh, you have to, have to apply running sutures. suture. You have to apply Inter running suture sutures. around the cut margin. Otherwise, it will bleed and lead to stroke. It will bleed. Yes. I think that nowadays we are not getting the so much big hydrocele to do that. But even then, you should know. Okay. So, what are the layers? How will you assess that you have gone the proper plane so you can evert? Have you done that? Yes, sir. Have you done an eversion of sac? Yes, sir. Okay. Tell us the so, layers in the scrotum. Tell us the layers of scrotum as you go from the skin. What layers you have to cut through to reach the hydrocele sac? The appropriate sac space. Uh, so, starting from the skin, uh, skin yes. there will be uh, datos muscle. There will be external spermatic fascia and uh, cremasteric muscle, internal spermatic fascia. Muscle? Do you find muscle in the scrotum? No. Uh, yes. Uh, so, cremasteric fibers and uh, internal spermatic fascia. Yes. fascia. fascia. Yes, and sir. then give to that? Uh, inter internal spermatic fascia. Continuation and... of what? Internal yes, spermatic continuation of what layer? Uh, uh, sir, uh, the tra transverse is abdominis. Transversal is transversal. Transversal is transversal. Is tra transversal okay. is first. So once you've incised this, what is exposed now? Deep to this? Yeah, so the deeper to this will be the tunica vaginal sac. What? Tunica vaginal sac, what uh, layer? Uh, parietal layer of the yes, parietal, parietal layer. layer. Yeah. Normally, what is the color? Normally, what color will give you and guide? Probably. Uh, so if they, it is not a, for a prolonged period, so blue, uh, slightly bluish. Uh, yes, yes, yeah. that is a significant area, bluish color. That will give you an idea. Probably it is the sac. Then what do you want to do? Uh, so you will incise, uh, incise the layers in the line of skin incision, and then what do you do? Uh, so we uh, will make a small uh, cut in the over no, the. Uh, no, no. After incising the layers, you don't make an opening. You have to make a space where. Yes. Uh, between the uh, datos muscle and the. Uh, the no, and the. No, datos. No, not datos. You say there are yes, other layers. Into the the space. You have already uh. seen the bluish color. So the bluish color in between and outside all the layers, then you must have to create a space. Create a uh, you will create a pen with uh, the by yes. inserting my finger and yes, that is a yeah. vascular yeah. plane. So you yes, create sir. the space between the layers you've incised on either side, so that after the eversion you can put the everted sac and the tissue margin opposed. What precaution you are supposed to take while everting? As because the, in the top and posterior you have the cord. After everting, you are given suture. Okay? Is it? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. So what sir, precaution uh, you are supposed to take while you uh, are will... everting and suturing? Uh, sir, uh... Yeah. Sir, I will be cautious that the, there will be no torsion uh, one is torsion, uh, or placement, torsion and while uh, suturing, while will, suturing. Uh, at the upper pole, why do you stop? For the upper pole, I will be cautious that I, I do not take uh, up the bite over the any uh, cord structures or that any vessels. One. And second, 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 how tight you will suture? How tight you will suture? Oh, I will not. Uh, I will not uh, keep it uh, too tight so, yes. so that there will be constant. You should admit the tip uh, of your little finger. Yes. Okay. Hmm. Because, because you make too tight, have... it will cause congestion. If you make too tight, and that part such may get compressed. Yes. And ultimately, pain and swelling will increase in the post-operative period. And you will see the testicular size has increased again. Okay? Yes. While placing back in the scrotum, how do you say that you are not causing an iatrogenic torsion? While you are placing the testes back in the scrotum, what will you yes, be sir. looking at? Uh, sir, while placing back the uh, testes in the uh, uh, testic back, I will uh, keep what is the, the guide? Uh, there is a guide uh, so will... on, the, 
there will be, I will uh, look for the lateral uh, sinus. I will place the lateral sinus of S is laterally, yeah. and the uh, superior pole. Uh, this is the sinus of the epididymis. There yes, is a groove between the epididymis and the testis that goes sinus of the epididymis. That should be looking laterally. So while pressing back, we ensure that the sinus will be looking laterally. Okay. So uh, while you have given, suppose you have given an incision. Okay, so you have seen the everything is there, cyst is there, but occasionally you might get it is adherent to the testes. Then what do you want to do? It is a very rare case, though it is rare, but you might get occasionally, but it not it will be in a case where there is repeated pain in the and the swelling is same, gradually increasing in size. You have given an incision, you have seen to some extent, probably it is the sac. And then you have given an incision, little bit of fluid has come out and the rest of the test is, is you will see the, uh, it is, uh, uh, that is due to the fibrosis, you can't separate. Then what do you want to do in that case? Very rarely it can be seen. Tunica albuginia shate aquare tight separation kora yes, jachana. Yes. This is yeah, due to the result of uni or kite. Yes. yes. Oh. Sudito, you have made another case ready for presentation? Other benign swelling? Or one case? No, sir. One case I was one. told. Patient refused surgery. Any alternative? Patient said, oh, I will not undergo any operation. So but the patient uh, uh, refuses. Uh, so any... <coughs> but he want relief from the uh, swelling. Any alternative? Uh, sir, in, if the patient is refusing surgery, I mean, I can go for aspiration of the uh, hydrosis. Only, only aspiration or something else is done with aspiration? Or, uh, aspiration along with uh, giving uh, sclerosing sclerot agents uh, can be instilled. Yeah. Yes. So what is the problem with this statement? Aspiration sclerosin therapy has been described, uh, but what is the point against yes, and sir. why is not being popular? Uh, sir, uh, uh, they, they do not give any permanent cure and it, uh, the hydrocell can recur again. Uh, in, and in this and what else? What else? Uh, and uh, while aspirating, you can injure the underlying testis. That can lead to formation of hematoma. One is injury. Hematoma. Second is, uh, even if you give a sclerogen, that can cause underlying inflammation. Hmm. Okay. And that will cause the post-operative pain. So, there are post-interventional in pain and the swelling. Hmm. Uh, oh, so, can uh, you tell uh, me? Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes. What is the complication of uh, operation, immersion of sex? Have you seen any complication? Uh, so there will be uh, hematomas uh, and post-operative pain uh, after the surgery. Actually, pain is not a complication. Complication is complication. Some amount of pain is expected. Hmm. It's all complication. One is you said hematoma. Yes. Hematoma. It's a very common, common. I have seen patient requiring blood transfusion following immersion of sex. Because people are not very cautious about the uh, hemostasis. What else? One is bleeding. Next. Uh, bleeding. Second, you said you will take care while placing the testes back in the scrotum. So if you are not properly placing it, what can happen? You have no so reports that you see the proper way. The sinus, sinus will be this side. So while you have putting it back to the Ajay. total sac, there no. might be torsion. Torsion, torsion of the testes. Yes. So okay. that's why the torsion of the testes will be there and necrosis of the testes will be there. Okay. So you should keep in your mind while repositioning the testes, that is the after eversion. Within the scrotal sac, the alignment should be proper. Otherwise, if there is a twist, so possibility of torsion. 
and we done need as a, done as opd procedure another complication done as opd procedure in the minor operation theater uh, next important sterility is not sterility is not 100% the infection uh... yes very common yes infection not infection. very uncommon in a patient has got hydrocele okay infection and delayed complication Delayed complication. Uh, at atrophy of the atrophy can happen. Yes, if you are too tight in the uh, upper ring, you can upper cause uh, atrophy. What else can happen? You are a novice, first year PG doing a hydrocele. What can happen? We have seen number of cases. Recurrence. Recurrence of the recurrence. If you have not inverted the sac properly, uh, some amount of sac is not inverted. So there may be recurrence. I, I thought you will present two cases, one hydrocele and one uh, varicocele or because it was written as benign. Yes, benign, big chapter. Yeah. Okay, tell me what is the varicocele? Uh, sir, uh, varicocele. We, uh, uh, we can discuss, no? What yeah. is varicocele? Uh, sir, varicocele is a uh, dilatation of the uh, testicular uh, uh, of the uh, uh, when you say uh, verico when you say verico varicos yes. it has got some clear points one is Di you say dilatation dilated and, tortuous uh, and, uh, and elongation elongation, elongation. Okay. three things yes. must be there if you say varicocele this happens where Uh, Varicocele is a dilated, tortuous, and elongated uh, 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 veins. Uh, veins of, of the uh, testes. Testes means what? What yes. testes? What from the yes. venous plexus? Uh, yes, sir. Starts in P. Pampiniform plexus. Pampiniform plexus. So suppose you have checked the patient. On standing, you will see the varicocele. But do you want to do any other position test the test here that the whether the dilatation is there in any other position? Uh, sir, uh, in both, there is a case for both side. test. Suppose it is the varicocele on the left side. So on huh. standing, you have seen the veins are dilated. So, okay. So. Now, do you want to do any other test? In that case, uh, sir, in uh, in both there is a test for both tests. I will I will ask the patient to go down. Uh, in in such case, uh, in that case, uh, there will be uh, 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 pro prominence of the veins. Suppose whenever the patient is uh, standing, so what happens? There is a dilatation. Okay. So yes, sir. If patient lies down, what will happen? Uh, the, the veins will collapse down. Why it will collapse? Um, that is, it will drain spontaneously to the veins. Okay? If it doesn't collapse, then yes, what it signifies? And specifically, more specific on the left side, what it signifies? Yeah. Uh, there may be, there is an obstruction. Or there is something which is obstructing the venous outflow. So, where is the site of abstraction? <clears throat> in the left Possibly. side, uh, in case of left side, can can be the renal vein uh, obstruction due to, yes. uh, primarily due to yes. renal cell carcinoma. So renal vein. So, renal vein obstruction is a common. In which case, probably? Uh, so in renal, uh, renal cell carcinoma. In your mind, so whether there is an associated malignancy. Renal malignancy. If there is a renal malignancy, so it can happen you might get the dilated pampiniform plexus on the left side. Do you again, understand? Again, again, varicocele may be primary uh, or secondary. Yes, what do you yes. mean by primary varicocele? Uh, so primary varicocele are uh, varicocele without any known etiological factors. Uh, what, is, what is the explanation for primary varicocele? Why does the primary varicocele happen at all? It's more common than again in the left side. Why does the primary varicocele happen? There are some explanations given. Uh, so the, and in, in, case of, 
yes so in uh, case of left sided varicoses the uh, causes can be the one is the, the testicular vein is draining uh, in perpend uh, perpendicularly uh, with the uh, renal, renal vein yes and uh, uh, and uh, it passes uh, in the right perineum behind which structure uh, there will be uh, uh, sigmoid colon yeah, uh, sigmoid which is which is most of the time loaded loaded can compress the can compress the testicular vein yes so any and other then, any other congenital and, any other congenital abnormalities does the two testes remain in the same level in the scrotum right and left no so the right testes is a little bit uh, higher up so left is a little at a lower level so these are the level. usual explanation what is a uh, uh, more uh, reasonable expression for primary varicose how does the venous the... return occurs how does the venous return occur from the testes up to the termination uh, sir the uh, left testes drains by uh, primary pampering complexes veins and uh, pampering com complexes of veins which uh, forms the testicular vein and left drains, drains into the left renal vein the, the, the scrotum down and the renal vein in the right epidermis see the distance Yes, how is sir. this venous flow maintained why there is no back flow uh, the valves uh, yes the, the valves, valves in the vein there are valves in the vein so one explanation is paucity of valve deficient valve which can cause reflux okay that is another explanation mm -hmm. and occasionally the superior mesenteric vein and uh, superior mesenteric artery and aorta the angulation and because it is on the left side is more common it is passing through that so that is another factor it can happen very rarely okay so you have seen that how you are planning to or confirm your diagnosis is there suppose you are not getting something or what is the presentation what is the commonest presentation of patient with uh, this varicocele Ah, uh, the uh, so the patient presents with uh, 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 back lying, uh, dragging since dragging pain over the scrotal region. Ah, uh, yeah. there is discomfort, and uh, there is a warm lying, uh, bag of warm like sensation over the scrotum. What are the grades okay. of varicocele? Uh, grades. There grade are three one, grades two, of varicocele. Grade three, grade. as far as I remember, so there are three grades of varicocele. Yeah. What is that? Grade one is, grade one is, uh, without. Uh, you may grade not one find, is... you, you may not find obvious swelling. There is a cough hmm. impulse. Cough impulse. Valsal. Valsal. Impulse. Okay. Hmm. Grade two is, is palpable. Palpable. You can palpate the bag of worms, and grade three is patient is standing Visible. in front of you. You can see the dilated veins through the total skin. So the different grades of varicocele. What is the problem? If the patient has varicocele, why does the patient require treatment? Ah, uh, sir. So young patient. The, young so patient, the, patient, the, patient coming to you with varicocele. Ah, uh, sir. So, uh, so first of all, there will be a, a dragging uh, pain and discomfort, and that as the patient is by, young and that can really by a scrotal suspensory bandage. Ah, uh, so that there can, can be some it can really cause infertility bandage. That is one. What else is the problem? Uh, so it can cause infertility also. Why? Infertility. Why? Because infertility. Why? Uh, so because uh, 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 for spermatogenesis, uh, the uh, two point five centimeter degrees uh, lower temperature is needed for spermatogenesis, and uh, and uh, in varicocele there is venous stasis and there is a loss of counter current exchange mechanism, and which is causing the elevation of the temperature in the uh, relative elevation of the temperature in the Testes which can hamper the spermatogenesis. What is the normal body temperature? Thirty-seven degree, is it? Yes, sir. So at least, so why God has given like that the testes? So at least, so it should be less than thirty-five. Thirty-five. Yes. So if it is thirty less than thirty-five, then only that spermatogenesis will be in a proper. in a man a proper way otherwise it can't be that's why god has given us a system which can hang and there is an this is another thing 
the pampinosome plexus is known as the cooling system of the testes. Oh. Have you heard the name? Why it is how, which way it is cooling? And because if it comes in the body temperature, so it will be more than 37 or 37. So as because it is there, so it is a cooling system as because the heat is evaporated. Okay. So that's why occasionally it is said that the cooling system of the testes. So Sir is asking the primary infertility. What you want to do in that case? Do you think that the primary infertility will, if you do any operation or intervention, that will go off or it is temporary? No, no sir. In case of, if it is a primary infertility, uh, it will still remain after the operation also. Again, infertility, it can be the primary infertility, it can be the secondary infertility. Okay. Yes, so, the, suppose if it is an infertility, so what will be, and you have examined the patient, semen analysis, you have done, the sperm count is less, or sperm Maternity. count is not normal. So, what do you want to do in that case? So, you shall have to do some motility, intervention. So, what intervention you want to do in that varicose? What are the types of operation? Have you, do you know? Uh, sir, I as uh, I know one. There is Palamo's operation is one. What is Palamo's operation? Uh, uh, sir, in Palamo's operation, we uh, uh, ligate the testicular. Uh, uh, smack, uh, we ligate the testicular vein. Where and where? Where? In the in the inguinal region, in the inguinal region, I, inguinal region. Testicular vein does not happen in inguinal canal. In inguinal canal, it is pampinium plexus. What happens? So, can you tell me the how many veins are there below deep ring and above deep ring? Testicular veins. Uh, there are five, uh, four to five around, around the. Five to eight is below the deep ring and above. About the degree, merges. merges to two to three, and the retroperitoneum will become single. If you see, single. if you go by laparoscopy, if you go by laparoscopic technique, you localize the deep ring, and just hmm. proximal to the deep ring, where do you find the vein, medial or lateral? If you take the artery and vein coming from the deep ring, where is the vein? Vein is medial or vein is lateral? Hmm. Where is the vein? The vein, the, the vein is medial to medial if this. Yes, the artery is lateral. So, your job will be, if you go by laparoscopic palomo, you have to dis incise the peritoneum in the retroperitoneum proximal to the deep ring, dissect the vein, I can just clip, you need not divide also. You can just clip the vein. That is laparoscopic palomo operation. Yes. Okay. But if you do open, so it is 1.25 centimeter above the deep ring. Do you yes. understand? You will give incision, deep small deep. incision, and you might get the two vein as well. Mm -hmm. Instead of one artery and the two vein, you might get the two vein. So suppose accidentally it was very difficult to separate. You didn't understand. You have ligated the artery as well. What will be the complication? It will be uh, ischemic or uh, ischemia to the testis. Uh, ischemia. The it can happen. It might not happen as well. Any, any, Why? Anything... Uh, Why? Sir, because it might the, not the uh, testis has got uh, uh, other blood supply, some epididymal uh, arteries also. Uh, what else? Not epididymal artery. There is a defined artery. Artery to the vas. Vas. Artery to the vas. And, and cremesteric vessels. And cremesteric vessels. Okay. So, testes may survive with these collaterals. But always we should think of the after doing Palamo's operation also, if the, there is the sterility, there is sterility, if you do that varicosal effect or go off for one or two years and after that, again there is the possibility of the varicose as because 
there is a communication between the pampiniform plexus and the cremasteric vein that was we were discussing that vein there should have any communication okay dr varsha you have gone beyond 95 <laughs> okay okay thank you thank you thank you, okay. thank you. sorry thank you thank you thank you, thank you. Thank you. thanks thank you. thanks